Hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. Patera here with a quick video for you today about canning. We are so busy and we have so much of our harvest coming in at one time. It happens every year and that's a great problem to have and we're so thankful for that. But we need to get a lot of this processed and ready and put away for the fall and the winter. So we're going to take you along for the ride. We're going to show you a quick and easy and simple method to can tomatoes. Who doesn't love tomatoes? I mean, they are just wonderful. You can make so much out of it, and it can carry you for a very long time with many different recipes throughout the winter. So we're canning tomato sauce again today. We're on our third, <laughs> third um, batch, if you will, from, the, from our garden. We've gotten some from Old Fred as well, but uh, we have an abundance of different types of tomatoes, different sizes. Uh, an heirloom and all of whatnot. So since we're trying to process all of our harvest right now from corn to beans to peppers to this and before you know it you're going to be dealing with apple butter and pear butter also but we're going to show you how we do this today. Now if you have your ball canning book which I've told you a million times before go ahead and invest the you know six seven eight dollars at your local Walmart or Lowe's or wherever and grab one of these books. It's the all to refer to book for any canner out there and it's wonderful. One of the best and easiest ways to learn how to can is with tomatoes. They are very acidic. You, have, you know, you do it in the water bath. You don't have to worry about pressure. So it's very, very good for somebody who's just now learning. And I'm going to show you the easiest way to do it as well. We're making tomato sauce. Now, I like to can very basic things. I don't like to make them really extravagant or hot or spicy or super, super sweet because if once I pop it open six months later and I want to make it into something else, you know, I'll do so. Instead of using applesauce for a cake, I'll use apple butter. Instead of using um, salsa for marinara, I'll do the opposite. I like to make it very versatile, and this recipe is going to allow for you to do that because it's going to be really simple. But to make it even easier, if you're crazy busy, you know, working, raising the kids, working the farm, picking the harvest, you want something to work for you, definitely. And that's going to be your crock pot. Now this recipe, if, if you look at it in your ball canning book, it's simply done on the stovetop, so you can do it there. A lot of times when I can my tomatoes, I like chunky tomatoes, but in order for me to really keep that texture, I'm going to have to scald the tomatoes, peel off the skin, and go through that process first. I like that process, but it's a little bit more involved. The reward is big too, though. But this is really great because this is going to allow you to make pizza sauce. It can be your starter for any, any of your tomato sauces, okay? Marinara's, chili sauce, pizza sauce, ketchup, what, just the really great basic. So this is all you're going to do. You need a big crock pot, preferably more than one probably because you're going to love this so much. You're going to say, I wish I had several going. I have three going at one time. That's how many tomatoes I try to do at one time and then do it again like today. So you're going to take your tomato. Of course, you're going to wash them. No big deal. What I do, there's two ways you can do this. You can just take off the end, or you can just simply, you know, kind of core them out there. That's really what you're trying to uh, do. Just take off that end, take off that core. And, of course, there is no waste on our homestead because my chickens, my goats, and my pig are going to get all of these goodies, all of this heirloom organic goodiness uh, right after we're done here. All you're going to do, this is how hard this gets, you're going to take that tomato, and you're simply going to cut it in quarters. Is that not delicious? Look at that. You're going to cut them in simple quarters. You're not going to skin them. You're not going to peel them. You're not going to do any of that hot mess. You're going to take them, and you're going to put them in the crock pot. So what I do is I just get a bunch going at one time. Me and my boys will just go through. Oh, my goodness. I would tell you, I can't give you a specific number of um, pounds, per se, or necessarily on size, because it's going to be dependent upon your crock pot. I'm going to tell you to get close to filling it up, because it is going to cook down. At that point, all I do, literally, is I take the lid, this lid's already been on there, and I'm going to put the lid on, and I'm going to turn it on high, and I'm going to let it cook for several hours, keeping an eye on it. Again, it's dependent upon your crock pot. Some of them cook faster than others. When this really starts to get cooking, okay, I mean, it's working it, it's cooking it down, and the tomatoes are stewing and softening them up, I then make sure I take my crock pot lid, maybe even before this point a little bit, depending on what's going on, and I'm going to tilt it because you don't want it creating all that extra water and moisture because you want a pretty thick sauce, okay? So once that, you know, once I'm to a point where I'm comfortable, I'm then going to add whatever, if you want to add spices, you do not have to add anything if you don't want to. 
what I've done is I'll add a little bit of salt, maybe a little bit of oregano. If I'm making marinara, of course, or a, a spaghetti sauce or tomato sauce that I like for um, those types of dishes, whatever spices you like, basil, oregano, garlic, salt, pepper, whatever, and I'll put it in there and I, you know, I may let that cook with it. Then all you have to do, so this has been cooking all morning into the afternoon. If you can kind of see what I'm talking about here, it's a thick stewed tomato, okay? All I've done is I've been taking them out and I've put them in the food processor. A little bit at a time. That's it. And I'm just going to pulse it. It's going to be a loud here, but I'm going to do it. Pulse it. All you're trying to do is work those seeds in. You're trying to work that skin in, and it's going to do it for you. From that point, I just transfer it into a pot just to keep it, just to hold it. I'm going to continue to do that until this pot is completely empty. Worked it in here poured it in here, and then I'm going to can it. So depending upon what you're making, of course, then you can go on to make different types of styles. You can do salsa, which you've cooked your onions and peppers and whatnots on the side, and then you would add it to your sauce. But that's up to you. I like to have just a basic sauce going, because then again, like I said, I can later on transform it into whatever, uh, you know, I need to transform it into. All you got to do, like I said, is cut them into quarters, put them in the crock pot, and let that work for you. If you can grab at least two or three crock pots and have them going at the same time, that would be very handy. I have found that my largest crock pot here, I believe it's a seven quart, kind of don't quote me, I believe so, um, not a full fill up on it is giving me between three and four quarts at a time. Remember, it cooks down. So I hope you try this method. This allows you to work other things with the canner, your corn and your beans and check your barn and play with your kids. It does all the work for you up to the actual final canning phase, which is super easy. If you haven't started canning, you certainly need to try it. It's certainly a throwback to days gone by and a lot of, uh, you know, sustainability with knowing how to grow your own food and to store it. So if you like what you see here at Appalachia's Homestead, be sure to subscribe. Check us out on Facebook or on Instagram, and we have our blog. And as always, we thank you for joining us and for all of your support. You're just always so good to us. And, um... Just start canning. Just to give you an idea of what this looks like after it's been cooking down and you're ready to put it in your food processor or your Vitamix or your even your blender. But uh, you definitely want this type of thick stewed consistency. And I'm going to tell you what, nothing smells better than this. So simple to do.